Welcome in Braves Today, bravestoday.com. I am Ben Taylor as Lindsay's a little out of town, but that's all right. We're going to go ahead and do a little something different, which I will be interested to see his takes whenever he gets back to see what he thinks about the lineup that I have chosen. Going to go today with the way too early opening day lineup. This episode brought to you by Active Wealth Management. Go to annuity360.net for your free book. It's also brought to you by Plains Coffee, plainscoffee.com. Go to promo code or use promo code BRAVES for your 10% off just for watching or listening to this podcast, Braves, today. All right. So the way too early opening day lineup, which I know every one of you have probably decided who you want to put one through nine. I'm sure you're saying Ozuna is going to be your automatic DH. I thought I'd change it up a little bit. And the reason being is I thought I would move the lineup around. When you look at all the projected lineups, a lot of people go with basically what it was last year. And then you throw Kelnick somewhere there in there in the bottom portion of the lineup. Not to say that he's still not in the bottom portion of the lineup. I probably have him just a little bit higher, more towards the middle than most would. Of course, you got to go with your leadoff guy and MVP, Ronald Acuna Jr. And the reason being is because any guy that's going to go out there and put up 35 doubles, as well as the home runs that he was able to tack on last year with 41 and that 4070 club, batting 337 on the year, which was an extreme boost from the previous years. When you look at the last three years, 337 last year, 266 the year before, 283 the year before that. Now, in that three-year total, he's still over 30 or 300 as far as uh, batting average is concerned, but the stolen base is picked up. Of course, everybody says, well, that's because of the new rules. Y'all, he went from 29 to 73. So it's not like it just was 15 more or it was even 20 more, or all of a sudden he had a burst of speed. Knees healthy, ankles are healthy, everything's healthy. So, of course, you got to go with Ronnie up there at the top spot and see if he can just get on base or put one over the wall to go ahead and get things started correctly. Also, I'm going to give you your starting pitcher before it's all said and done with. Uh, after Ronnie, you got Ozzy, who – why take it away from him? He's done well there. He's done well in that spot. Batted 280 last year, which is up from the 247 average the year before, 259 the year before that. Matter of fact, this has been his best year batting average wise since 2019, even though he still missed a couple of games. And he tacked on 33 home runs, which is the most of his career as well. And he had 109 RBIs. So you might as well, the veteran, give the nod to him. He still gets that second spot. Not going to see a lot of change out of this for me. And the reason being is because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So here's another one. Austin Riley over there at third base. Of course, he still had a decent year last year at 281, still up from the 273 the year before that. Now, 2021 was his best year average-wise, where he batted just over 300 at that time. However, he's now picking up with the home runs. He's been consistent in the last three years. 21, he had 33 home runs, 38 after that. 37 this past year, and he still went through a couple of slumps last year and still was able to bounce out of it. But that average picked up, which means he's putting the ball in play, and you hear about the hard-hit balls and the barreled balls. Well, he had a whole lot more of those this past year than what he had the year before. So, Austin Riley, you're still in there at number three. And, of course, our home run king, Matt Olson, still cleaning things up. And everybody says, well, could he have done better? Y'all, is his best year of his career. I mean, he hasn't ever batted over 280. Last year, he batted 283. I said at the first of the year, if I can get 260 out of him and I can get 40 home runs out of him, I will be completely happy. So I'm ecstatic. He was an MVP in my mind. Ronnie just outplayed him out in right field and overall, plus he became his solo member of the 4070 club. So 283 average this past year with that 54 home runs, league leading, by the way, and still in top five in MVP voting. Matt Olson, you get the nod at cleanup. This is where things start to change just a little bit for me. And the reason being is just because I want to give somebody a chance to prove themselves. I'll get to that momentarily because I want to mention, thanks to Ford, Active Wealth Management, make sure you go to annuity360.net for your free book. Tell Ford we said hello. Call Ford, get your own nationwide Pete 10 illustration so you can learn how you can get 20% immediate income and account bonuses of up to 8% annual interest and growth. 
8% interest guaranteed each year is higher than bank CD rates at this time. Just call Ford. He will explain it to you, or you can go online because I know that's what you like to do. Activewealth.com is where you can find him. Learn how you can work with Ford and his Active Wealth team. You'll be glad that you did. 770-685-1777. That is Ford Stokes. 770 685 one seven seven seven. As I said last time, with that many sevens in there, you got to be lucky. Call Ford today. All right, the changes in the lineup that I was talking about just a minute ago. This is where it gets a little different because he was at the bottom of the lineup the entire year last year, and I think he's earned the right to move up. And the reason I did this is because I want to make sure I want to treat it like a basketball team that brings out your starting five, and then you put another five in there, and you don't drop a beat. Same thing with here. You got your one through four. You got your cleanup hitter in Matt Olson. I want to do the same thing in the bottom part of the lineup. Michael Harris, the second, the right fielder. I think he can be a guy that can act almost like a second leadoff hitter once you get through that first four of the lineup. It's almost like you're starting right back over. And the reason being, 293 hitter this past year. Had 18 home runs. I think he stays healthy. He's going to be a 25 to 30 home run guy. I think he can be a 300 batter. He's only been in the league, just count it, two years because of his rookie season. He's batted 297 and 293, an average of 295. So I'm not so sure we can't get him over the 300 mark as far as his batting average is concerned, especially if he's able to get that 25 to 30 home runs. Also, we're going to be able to see him steal a lot more bases if he gets on and he's batting in that fifth position. And I think that's something he did not take advantage of last year, and he definitely needs to. Here's the other shocker you're probably not going to like because you've seen his previous years and what he's done over in Seattle, and it's the new guy and the left fielder, Jared Kelnick. As last year, he batted 253. Before that, he had a putrid year in 2022. Uh, as a matter of fact, so much so, they even bounced him back, and he started out 2023 in the minors. But 2021, not too bad, still batted sub 200, but it started picking up. And the reason being is I think he now is going to be more protected, and he's going to be able to get on base a lot more. And he had, last year, he had he was almost at 50 RBIs. However, he did have 94 hits on the year, and he did walk. He walked four times. However, we need to get the home runs up. He only had 11 last year. When he first came into the league, he had 14. Then you thought we'd see that go up because they gave him some time in the minors. He had 18 one time. He had, he ended up having uh, seven the following year when he got back to the league, but he just had nobody around him and he has not been happy. You've heard his complaints in the offseason about the organization. I hope that doesn't spill over into Atlanta, but I'm giving him an opportunity here to jump up and bat at the number six spot where pretty much everybody else has him sitting down there at the eight or the nine spot. We go from there to Sean Murphy. Yep, opening day. I know you guys would love to see Denard behind the plate, but when you hear who my starting pitcher is, you're probably going to see why I've got Sean Murphy in there. Opening day starting lineup, regardless if it's a right-hander or a left-hander that we're facing, I got Sean Murphy in there at the number seven slot. And the reason being behind that is last year, 251, 250 the year before that. That just seems to be his watermark. He did have a great first of the season last year. That, tr that trailed off tremendously by the end of the year. He had 21 home runs this past year, 18 the year before whenever he was with Oakland and the A's, but we need to see a little bit more out of him. So until he's able to prove that he can jump up there into that five slot or even act like maybe a second, I don't know, cleanup guy in the lineup, I got Sean Murphy catching and in at the seventh spot. Then we got Marcelo Zuna. Yep, the DH that I'm going to move all the way down, and that's because of his slow start yet last year, honestly, that's got me feeling this way. He picked it up. I mean, we were talking. He was sub-200 before the break, and then coming out of the All-Star break, he had a heck of a second half. Ended up salvaging a 274 batting average before the end of the season. He also grabbed 40 home runs, which is just absolutely shocking because the pace he was on at the beginning of the year, I didn't know that he would have 25 home runs, and he ends up getting 40 before it's all said and done with. Also, a triple RBIs last year. He had 100 RBIs, so if he can improve that a little bit, even if he goes to 41 home runs and he gets 101 RBIs, I would still like to see that average just because he barrels ball so well and he hits ball so hard. He's going to allow things to happen on the base pass in front of him if he will just put the ball in play. Those RBIs will go up without having to hit bombs. So I've got Ozuna down there at the number eight spot. And of course, Orlando Arcia, I just I don't see him batting anywhere other than nine. He's got an opportunity to kind of be that quote second leadoff man that everybody likes to talk about. 
or having two leadoff men at the top of the lineup whenever they make their way through the order. However, not a great year last year, but still better than what he had the year before and the best year that he's had since 2017 when he was with Milwaukee. Batted 264. The thing that he impressed me with this past year was the 17 home runs. He had double-digit home runs back in 2019 with Milwaukee where he had 15. But for some reason, because of this lineup, he saw a lot more pitches and he was able to get out on some stuff and had 17 bombs. And that's even with an injury this year. Of course, I do need to thank, we got a new sponsor, by the way, so you guys make sure you thank them, and that's Plains Coffee Company. Is uh, You go to plainscoffee.com. Here's the thing. They've got other stuff. they got easy checkout whenever you get there as well, but they've got a ton of stuff that you can choose from as they've got the flavored coffees. If you're not a fan of coffee, they got tea as well. All listeners and viewers get 10% off your order. All you have to do is use the promo code BRAVES in order to make that happen. That is BRAVES. That is at plainscoffee.com. Promo code BRAVES for your 10% off. Get one of the flavored, the Cinnabon, I think, is one of them. I got to try that. I got to have that sent to me. That's I got the regular. I don't have that. And, and let's just be honest. I think the wife would be a fan of it as well. Plainscoffee.com, promo code BRAVES for your 10% off. So who do I have starting? Everybody wants to go with Freed. Some people have even suggested Morton. I've seen that come up because they said he's earned it because of his, I guess, grit and uh, his ability to uh, be the veteran in the in the locker room and, and, and the clubhouse and, and give him a chance. No, there's no chance. The guy I'm going with, even though he had a 386 ERA this past year, Spencer Strider. The guy that got 281 strikeouts and did so in only 186 and two-thirds innings pitch. He did give up 146 hits and 85 runs. However, as far as base on balls are concerned, he only walked 58. And this guy still throwing mid to upper 90s on into the sixth and seventh inning. So I would love to see Spencer Strider toe the mound, toe the rubber for the Braves to get the opening day start contrary to what some people do believe. Would love to hear what you think your opening day starter should be as far as pitching is concerned and run down your lineup and who you like. Again, on mine, as we get things let off with Ronald Acuna Jr., then you move to Ozzy Albez, Austin Riley, is Albies rather, Austin Riley, Matt Olson, then it's Michael Harris II who moves up from that eight and nine spot up into the five spot this year. I think he's earned it. Jared Kelnick, who hasn't quite earned it, but I still think he's going to be one of the shining lights of this Braves team this year that nobody was expecting. Sean Murphy just behind him at the seventh slot. Then we move on to Marcelo Zuna, Orlando Arcia in the nine spot. And then, of course, on the rubber, it will be Spencer Strider toeing the mound opening day for the Braves. It's all been brought to you by Active Wealth Management. Go to annuity360.net for your free book. Also, don't forget to visit plainscoffee.com and use the promo code BRAVES for your 10% off. The way too early opening day roster, regardless if it's lefty or righty, these are the guys that I would like to see. And I'm sure you'll see a version of this in spring training that takes place when they get started here in about a month or so. I'm Ben Taylor, Braves Today, all the written work at bravestoday.com.